One of the first questions that people ask me when they get to know that I have DID is, is it like split? The moment you bring up the movie Split, you know what's the next question that's coming up. So are you, going to, are you dangerous? So um, when and how did you find out that you have a mental health condition? Um, it took me quite a long time to find out actually. Uh, the first time was when I was 20. I had a breakdown and I sort of locked myself in my room for about eight months. And one day my friends forced me out and they saw the scars that I, I was self-harming and they saw the scars on my wrist and they asked me what is going on. And that um, made me very anxious as well. So I got a panic attack in public. That was the first time that uh, the hospital, they diagnosed me with depression and anxiety. And then six years later, I had an even bigger breakdown where I actually lost my memory and I started acting like a child. So I couldn't even brush my own teeth. I didn't know my name and things like that, so it's pretty, pretty severe. I got a chance to go study in the USA, and I thought that maybe a change of scenery, a change like go, go to another country, might be helpful. Uh, everything was just okay, until one fine day I fainted in class. On the fourth day, I was brought to the hospital because apparently I tried to uh, you know, commit suicide. Uh, they decided to admit me in the psychiatric ward and then I was there for a week and the doctors there diagnosed me with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And then I came back, I was discharged, I came back to school and it was the therapist in my school that started talking to me in a way that made me feel like I may be having multiple personality disorder because uh, I, did, I, I myself didn't know back then that the proper term for it was DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder. So she was trying to uh, talk to parts of me. Uh, in 2018, I had to make a trip to India. And while I was there, in order to replenish my medicines, I had to find a psychiatrist there. I went to see the psychiatrist and then he said that I have borderline personality disorder as well. That's how I ended up with these five <laughs> mental health disorders. So it took a really long time for me. What was your reaction when you were first told about your diagnosis? How did you feel about it? I've been going through a lot of abuse since I was 10 years old. So by the time in my early teens, already I knew that something is not right about me. There was not a moment in time when I felt like this diagnosis would make me uh, any less of a person. It just gave me a lot of uh, answers to the many questions that I have, you know, about my symptoms and what I was going through. And it validated a lot of the things that I was going through. So I was grateful for for getting the diagnosis that I got. What were some myths and misconceptions about mental illnesses that you once believed was or were true? One of my, my concerns when I realized I have DID uh, was that I was worried that I might have parts that will hurt people. Because, you know, my only, like I said, my only knowledge of DID was the movies that I've watched. And in those movies, naturally, there is a, an altar that harms people, or, you know, that is basically bad. I expected it to be very dramatic and I expected to have a very huge differences between the different parts. That was something that was very surprising for me because in my therapy, I would be talking normally and my therapist would 
asked me, like, is this still Gaia? And I'll be like, mm, I'm not, yeah, I'm not Gaia. <laughs> what is one assumption people make about you or your mental health condition that you wish they would stop? This one, I think the answer is pretty obvious. It definitely goes for DID. One of the first questions that people ask me when they get to know that I have DID is, is it like split? Another question they ask is, so do you hurt people? Is it scary? You know, basically they all want to know if it is harmful, you know, when, when, when it's not. So I hope they would stop asking, is it like split and rather just say like, ask an open-ended question like, oh, I would like to know more about it. Could you tell me a bit more about it? I know very little about it, you know? So that would make us so much happier to open up and share because the moment you bring up the movie Split, you know what's the next question that's coming up. So are you, going to, are you dangerous, you know? So we, we know that, oh, you already have a preconceived notion that people with DID are dangerous. What is the best thing that has happened because of your condition? The best thing would be self-awareness and self-acceptance. Everything that has got to do with me. And of course that came because I have so many parts of me, as in like, so many altars in me. And each of my altars were formed as a way to protect myself in different situations as I was growing up. And so each altar had something to teach me. And I learned a lot from the entire system. Uh, knowing my condition came the benefit of the proper treatment that I needed. And because of these treatments, I was able to love myself, to you know, look within, to be more aware of myself too. Because all, all my life, I've been so afraid to sit with myself. I was always looking for a way to be out of my body. That means not connect with myself. Let's just be busy with schoolwork or you know, busy with anything but myself. So I realized that with this, with the therapies, it was very difficult, but I had to focus on myself. And with that came the self-awareness and the self-love and a lot of things I learned about myself, which also helps in me getting better. At which point on the road to recovery do you think you are at now? I think I'm somewhere in the middle because I have come a long way from the person who had lost her memory and was acting like a small kid. I still do act like a small kid sometimes when, when my baby little alters front. Um, but the situation is different. And why I say I'm in the middle and not further ahead is because I still have a lot of work to do before I can actually truly recover from any of these. And as for DID, there is no, as far as I know, there is no recovery. There is only well managing or well maintenance. So you manage it and you live with it. How has living with a mental health condition shaped who you are today? I would say that today I am someone with a lot more compassion, who is a lot more accepting of different people, different thoughts. Basically, I think I am someone whose heart has been opened. And I think that if it wasn't for my mental health illnesses, I wouldn't be like this. Oh wow, this is the last question. Yeah. What, what is your name? Introduce yourself. My name is Gayatri and you can call me Gaya. I am the main host of 
my DID system. A system is like me and the, all the other altars that I have. There is currently about 50 plus altars in my system. They can come and go as in like I can get more altars or the number can reduce depending on the purpose of the altar. So if an altar's purpose is served, the altar can disappear sometimes, not in every case. It is very different from for everyone with DID. How was the experience for you? Oh, this was very nice because this is actually the first shooting of this kind where I did not dissociate in between. So I was all the way Gaia. And it was a very comfortable environment, first of all. I think that also played a part in me not dissociating. The questions were very comfortable, yet open-ended enough to like talk about a lot of things. So it was a very positive experience for me. Okay, sure. <laughs>